Welcome to season 10 of the Parenting Aces podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Stone, and we are proud members of the Tennis Channel Podcast Network. I am thrilled this week to be talking with Mark Merkline and Matt Daly about a very cool new product out there to help not only beginning tennis players, but tennis players of all levels improve their technique and have more success out on the tennis court, which of course we all want. Before I bring these two gentlemen on the line, I want to just remind you if you haven't yet become a uh, premium member of Parenting Aces, we'd love for you to do so. Just go to parentingaces.com and click on the join button. You have lots of options there. And we have so much stuff coming up. Um, by the time this airs, I think we will be through with national hard courts, but be heading into the U.S. Open, U.S. Open years. So lots and lots of tennis happening around the world and lots of coverage coming from Parenting Aces. So if you are going to be traveling to different tennis events, please let us know. We'd love to say hello in person. It's always fun to meet members of our community. And uh, we're out there, out and about, not going live to the U.S. Open this year because they're limiting media. Um, but I do have remote credentials, so we'll be covering the junior event for all of you, as I have over the past 10 years. So crazy, crazy. Anyway, without further ado, let me get Mark and Matt on the line. I've got to unmute these guys. Gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate you having us. Good to see you. Hey, yeah, thanks for having us, Lisa. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So you guys both played college tennis. You have had incredible experiences throughout your your tennis career, starting from a young age, continuing now into obvious adulthood. For those of you watching on the video version, um, you can see these guys aren't junior players or college players anymore. They're a little past <laughs> that. But, <laughs> but recently, you guys decided to partner up and create a product, a tennis product. Mark, I'm going to start with you. Can you explain to us how you guys came together and made the decision that the tennis world needed another product to help players improve technique and improve their play. Well, uh, thanks Lisa. I, I know, you know, Matt has been the one pushing this along and he started probably three to four years ago with the idea and Matt and I go way back and we, and we've talked about it and he was just, he's, he's really a grip guy and believes that, to reach your full potential, you have to give yourself to be in a range of a certain grip. And he just was like, Mark, there's nothing out there like this or, or a, a really good teaching tool for grips. And he started and we started together actually in the kitchen, you know, making molds, you know, permanent molds on rackets and learning as we went and then starting using them with our students. And we found that it really cut down the time that it takes to learn. And uh, awesome. Matt was right, and, and we just you know continued to, to practice with it, do research with the product, and then it, it kind of was born from there. So Matt, GripMD is the name of the product. Yep. What is it about learning proper grip technique that can make or break a developing tennis player, whether it's a kid or an adult? Yeah, good question. I think the grip is so important to technique and the right fundamentals uh, and something I've been lucky enough to work on, you know, for a long time, players of different ages and levels, even some some top 100 pros on, on changing grips. Um, but a lot of times they're teaching around the grip. So say on the serve, your grips are fraction off, your elbow is going to drop, you know, your toss might go a little bit left, your contact point will be low. And then they're going to be teaching elbow up, move that toss higher, get your contact point up. When the reality is if you get someone in the right grip, those things will fall in line. So it's just so important to teaching. And I think it's the place that, that teaching should start. Uh, and then so many of those issues that arise uh, that they're trying to fix would, would fix themselves, really. I, you know, I was telling Mark offline that I about – Three years ago, a coach changed my grip. I've been playing the same way for, you know, at that point, 55 years. And all of a sudden, they're asking me to move my hand on my racket. And right. it's been 
you know, it's been in my head ever since. Like it's, you know, one of those things that still isn't coming naturally to me. So that leads me to believe that teaching proper grip technique from the get go really is crucial for developing players, whatever age they are, if they're starting as children or if they're coming into the game later as adults. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yep. No, I, I think it is. Um, and, you know, we're starting with the continental grip because that's the one grip that really everyone, you know, should be in from a young age and up on their volleys, on their slices, on their serves. Um, you know, later we'll be launching, you know, a forehand grip, uh, possibly a backhand grip. There's different ideas about what the perfect grip is, whether that's Eastern, semi-Western, you know, there's some some Westerns on tour. Um, uh, but starting with the Continental, um, really everyone should be in the right grip and it's, and it's hard to feel. Um, and there's really no teaching aid on the market. There are these little, um, there's some other, I'm not saying negative, there's some other things that don't, I don't think work too well. And so, um, this really lets you kind of put your hand right in the mold and feel the correct angle of the racket face. So, um, and you're right. Yeah. All, all ages, um, certainly it's, it's, it's very important. Mark, can you describe what Grip MD is? Like, what is this product? What does it look like? How do you use it? So I, I have one. I have it right here. Okay, great. So for so for those of you listening to the podcast on an app, you need to go watch the video version on parentingaces.com or on our YouTube channel so you can see this thing. Okay, right, go ahead, so, Mark. So basically what we designed is you'll see these ridges here and, and places for your fingers. And your, your hand just goes in and it's almost like, you know, when I was taught, they, they taped my hand to the racket. You know, and I, I <laughs> oh, talked to other players and you, they're like, this is the grip, we're taping you, you're going to volley with it. But we decided on something that would come, it, it comes on and off the grip. So you can use your own racket and take it off, practice a little bit. It, it's, in, it's in two pieces here and it okay. just clicks, it just clicks together. And it, it just takes the guesswork out. Your, your hand fits right in, you know, right into the mold. So I'm trying Is to there a lefty right version there. and a righty version or can it just flip over? So we, we're, we're, it's, we, we're discriminating a little now against the lefties, <laughs> but that's, that's going to change. Oh, no. I know, I know. So we're right now continental for, we, we have all the grip sizes from size zero all the way to four and a half size grip. So we, we take care of most of the grips and but we're just not lefty and, and as matt said we're going to get into other other shots you know forehands backhand semi-western eastern that sort of thing but we wanted to start continental because we feel like that was just the probably the most important one for teaching and just getting people you know giving them the ability to learn how to slice to serve the right way volleys forehand backhand overheads shots on the run it's just a grip that if you watch the pros, you know, there's a reason why th these guys can hit every shot and they look like it, they make it look easy. It's, you know, yeah. the, the grip's very important. Matt, can you talk us through, let's say, a lesson that you would teach to a junior player using Grip MD and how you would integrate it into that training session with them? Yeah, great question. I think, um, you know, it's hard for even if you get someone, uh, there's a lot of great coaches, you know, around the country teaching the grips. And, and what I found is even watching the player, um, let's say on the volley, you know, they uh, on the on the forehand volley, they might move that grip right before they hit. And so even if you start them in the right grip, it's going to move by lock by putting the grip MD uh, on their racket and having their hand go uh, right in the mold. They're going to they're going to be have the angle of the racket face such that they're going to have to adjust the way they hit it to the grip. And then after actually missing a few worse than they normally do, they will start adjusting their technique to make the volleys or it's on the serve. You know, if someone is, is serves a little too call it flat or pancakey, you put them in the grip, they might start missing it to the left. And then what they do is they adjust their aim. So mm -hmm. I would, I would put them, um, with the grip MD, practicing their volleys, uh, practicing their serves, uh, let them adjust, let them miss a few, adjust to the right grip, which might feel a little bit foreign. And then when they take it off, 
um, they're, they're going to already have that feeling and it's going to be much easier because what normally happens is even if you put them in the correct grip right before they hit the serve or the volley, they kind of cheat that grip over because they want to make it right. They want to make that serve. They want to make that volley. They want to miss. And so you might actually miss when you start with the grip MD with a new grip and your hand being in the correct place. Um, you're going to gradually adjust and, and then it gets much easier when you take the grip MD off. So um, I, I would. I would drill volleys and serves and some slices for you know five minutes and then take it off and see how they do uh, once they take the grip MD off. So it sounds to me as if it's really important for a player and a coach and in the case of a junior player, the parent to maintain a growth mindset as the child is using grip MD, learning how to adjust and use the proper grips and not get so freaked out about the misses and you know not worry so much about the results at first but focus on the long game yeah i i think so and, and i actually think you know with the continental grip um it's going to cut down the great thing is it cuts down on the time to change your grip so it used to take me a little bit longer i'd have to keep uh you know i have a lesson once a week and even if I could get them in the right grip, they come back a week later and they're in the wrong grip. It's like, oh man, a whole week went by. Then I give them their one week lesson and then they come back. And so this way, it actually cuts down on the time. And, and I think you'll find with a continental grip, especially um, a growth mindset is important, but it, it, they can get it fairly quickly um, with this grip change. I mean, I even coached a player who uh, in the off season changed their serve grip, a top 50 player in the world. Um, he, he changed his serve grip uh, in, in the six week off season that he had. So, and that's going out with massive pressures. So sure. it can be done in a, in a short period of time. Um, as long as they're using the right grip, that's the problem is when they don't have the right grip, then it takes a long time and gets very frustrating. Mark, what are some of the mistakes that you guys have seen in terms of players coming to you that, haven't been taught proper grips and having to kind of unteach and then correct and have them relearn with the proper grips. Well, you, we were talking earlier about this and I, I think it's right away, which it makes sense. You know, kids are taught, you know, look through the racket, you know, look through the strings and just tap the ball. And so when the ball comes, they feel like they're just going to reach out and go get it with their hand flat. And they, they go, you know, maybe from age four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a long time, of it, you know, creating a habit like that. Right. So, so that's why, I mean, it, it, it was frustrating as a coach. I mean, I, I was trying, I was hopping the net back and forth saying, you know, is he in the right grip? Is he not? And, um, you know, it, it, it was tough for the student as tough as it is for, for them. It was, it was tough for the coach as well. Mm -hmm. And this, just really helped a lot and like matt said in the beginning it's, it's always not pretty but you, you if you're in the right grip you can start to figure it out and it and it and, the, and then the guesswork's gone the coach knows that you're locked in to the right grip and your palm is that is in the right spot so it, it really makes it it makes it a, a, a quick learning experience and less painful for them because four years or five years or even some adults that have been doing it for 10 plus years, there's still an opportunity to change this. So it's kind of exciting for, for people to, to to give this a try because it really it really does work. Matt, how did y'all come up with the design and like the material that you used and all of that? So uh, I was lucky enough to work with uh, Brian Barker. Um, Got to give a shout out to him. Was USTA National Coach of the Year. Um, Coach James Blake from age 12 to number four in the world. And so um, we've been flirting with the idea forever. Um, and, and we came up with uh, these molds that we took to a prosthetics company and then they were drilled onto a racket. And, and we were uh, we were so surprised, actually, how, how well it, it worked, um, even more than we thought. And so Mark and I have been good friends uh, forever. And Mark actually traveled with James Blake and Brian on tour for a while. So I knew him through, through James. And, um, and, and so Mark really uh, took the idea and the concept and, and ran with it. I wouldn't be here without Mark and all the work that he's done. And like you said, we started out of 
his kitchen making molds, which we can make kind of personalized molds on our own, actually. Um, and then he deal, uh, dealt with, with engineering firms and um, the manufacturing. And so, uh, you know, Mark really took the idea and, and, and ran with it, um, took it to, to USTA and showed a lot of national coaches and, um, and, and just the feedback we got was tremendous. So he's really uh, taken it forward on the engineering, uh, you know, process. I love that. I people that have been listening to this throughout the pandemic know that uh, Shark Tank is one of my new guilty pleasures. So I love talking to people who have developed a product, taken it to market, kind of gone through the whole process. I'm just fascinated by that. How did you all come up with which material to use? Was that the decision of the engineers or is that something that you as tennis players and coaches said, you know, it needs to be this kind of material because of sweat and heat and we got to make sure people can hold on to it etc yeah we we knew that we did we wanted something that was going to be soft but then you know and be able to withstand you know repetitions and that you can hold on to it and not lose the grip um and we, we fiddled around with that quite a bit and you know matt and i were back and forth he was in connecticut and i was here and we were sending you know molds back and forth to each other and and uh, we wanted it to be com comfortable and to make sure that, you know, it didn't cause any pain in your hand and, and that sort of thing. So because tennis players are particular, just just like golfers. So we knew we had to get that right. So we, um, you know, so now, you know, we're really excited now. We have the, the one model out and we have one coming that'll be here in September for the more of a kids, a smaller model, you know, it's not just for kids, but it's for, you know, size zero and size four and one eighth grip. So, so we've, we're really excited about that one now too. That's awesome. And you mentioned James Blake. We recently had him on a video chat as well. And okay. I, I love that he's out there really getting involved or staying involved in the industry. Um, I, you know, I think it's, it's great to see these former top pros staying involved in our sport and speaking out. I know John Isner's uh, endorsing the Grip MD as well. And John's a former Georgia Bulldog where yeah. where my kids grew up, um, big Georgia fans. We They grew up yeah. in Atlanta. So uh, I love that you've got those two endorsing the product. You mentioned, Matt, a few minutes ago about when you have the wrong grip and especially let's say on the serve and it causes the elbow not to come up as much. One of the things that kind of popped into my brain is then not only are your, is your technique off and maybe your shots are off, but it could also lead to injury. Correct. And so that's yet another reason to get the grips right from the get go. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, and I, I know even some, uh, pro players that have gone through injuries trying to correct these, you know, deficiencies, you know, deficiencies. And sometimes I'm on the outside looking in. So I, you know, I'm pretty careful about, you know, what I say, but you'll, you'll see some injuries um, that can be prevented because when you're in the right grip, just biomechanically, everything's going to work uh, more efficient. And, you know, this is great for beginners, but you'd be surprised how many good players. Um, it's just, if you're like a fraction off, the, a fraction is too much. So mm -hmm. that's why there's the palm placement um, and the ridge on that racket will put you uh, right in, in the perfect place. Uh, and, and and it's not always a coach's fault. The kids will cheat over a little bit. It looks good from the top and then they cheat one little part of their hand over um, and, and then it, it throws everything off. So, uh, and then they're, then they're adjusting to it and, and absolutely it can lead to, to injuries. Um, yeah. You know, see on the forehand too. Um, I travel with a pro at kind of chronic, bicep tendonitis from a, a big western grip and by that point you know you have what you have on the tour so um you, you know you're you're absolutely right 100 percent. yeah and I, I mean we've done podcasts on the various injuries that ooh, that um kids can get from using improper technique and proper movement and proper um equipment too and one of the kind of new injuries that we're seeing more and more of is this backhand wrist. And a lot of that, <clears throat> excuse me, has to do with grip as well. So are you finding that as players are using grip MD, 
that they're reporting back that they're having maybe less discomfort, less pain after playing? Uh, on the serve, absolutely, because your arm will work more efficiently. You, basically, you can use more of a throwing motion and then everything will fire correctly. So you can throw it like um, a quarterback throws a football is how you, you can essentially, uh, you will be serving. But um, if you're in the wrong grip, it will lead to, it has to lead to a bunch of, it can lead to five, six, seven compensations. Um, and then with overuse, that can create problems. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Mark, is grip MD something that's widely available now? Is it something that coaches are buying or individual players are buying or are you seeing a combination? We're seeing definitely seeing a combination. We we've, you know, being in the tennis world, Matt and I have met a lot of coaches, a lot of players, and we, we know people that run academies and that sort of thing too. So we've we we kind of had the product out there showing them a lot of coaches purchased it you know three four five six grips so they can get their students all in a row and, and work on serves all together or volleys all together but i'm also seeing like a lot of a lot of adults coming and, and yeah. trying to make the change and and they'll send videos and, and and actually at the club they'll come and talk to me some of them and and it, it's and i tell them look it's it's a struggle a little bit at first because you've been doing something so long, mm -hmm. but they they all want to get better and they want to learn how to hit that slice on the serve or be able to hit a, a kick serve. And you just can't do that when they're playing with a semi Western grip on all their shots. So we've right. seen, we've seen a lot and, and we Matt and I have used it with all ages. If you watch some of the videos, you'll see a lot of, you know, basically from, from, I would say like seven, eight years old all the way up, you know? So, it's I'm excited about it and and I and I know what what I and I, and I know it works you know so it's not like I'm you know just making something up grips are, are very important and uh, and I've noticed just in my private lessons how much quickly things happen and, and people really get it mm -hmm. and, uh, it's that's it's been fun yeah that's awesome um I will have a link to all your videos in the show notes on parentingaces.com and on your favorite podcast apps. You can look and get the links to that. So if you want to see how it works, you'll be able to look there. I know you guys also have a lot of videos on your Facebook page. So we'll have a link to the Facebook page as well. Is GripMD something that I could go out and buy for my kid, put it on their racket, send them out to the court and let them work on on let's say their serve um, without a coach present or is it important to have a coach there guiding them as they're working through the grip change? Matt, you wanna take uh, that one? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I would say absolutely they can work on, on their own. I think, you know, with a coach can be valuable, um, especially if they've been working on those changes with the coach, it just makes it a little bit easier for the coach and makes it easier, you know, for, for myself um but something they can do on their own as well um i mean the continental uh for the serve is obviously really important and so uh, anyone can go out with a bucket of balls um and and really improve their serve um no no question take their time uh, hit hit five or ten minutes of serves with the grip md on take it off uh, and they can repeat that process a couple times and, and same with the volleys as long as you have someone that can feed you some balls um or or a ball machine um, absolutely, you can work on it, you know, by yourself. And that, that's the great thing. Like I said, I would see my lesson. Hope I, I felt like I was making real progress. They came back a week later with a different grip, and then I wasn't totally starting over. But you're trying to build it back, and so um, it actually helps if they use it on their own in between lessons because they won't lose the feel of the right grip. That's the hardest thing teaching grips is getting someone to commit and stay in the right grip. If they do, that process becomes much shorter and easier. And so that's really the biggest challenge. So it, it will help a lot if they if they use that uh, on their own. How important is it to hone this new grip change before going into a tournament situation? Mark, you want to take that one? Yeah, that, that's, I mean, Matt, I know, I know how Matt feels about this. So it, it's, yeah, yeah you, you always, you know, you don't want to, as a player, we, we, Matt and I both feel like sometimes coaches are, are guilty of just trying to fix everything and, and going to three, four, five things and, and working on 
you know, serves and volleys and tops and backhands and all of these shots. And the kids go to the tournament and they're still thinking about all the all the pointers you gave them. So we, we like to give, you know, one or two pointers and then work on those and, and, and know that it's going to, you know, it, it, it takes months to, to develop these, these skills. Mm -hmm. But with if you're going to use this as a teaching tool and say you have a player that's, you know, in the boys 12s and he has a national tournament coming up and he, he's in a, a semi-Western grip, you, it's probably not wise within, you know, that week to, to probably go and, and try to use it. But when there's, you know, you have a few weeks and you slowly start to introduce this at the net with just volleys and, and maybe overheads and let them feel what it's like. And then it, it, it takes it takes a little time. You, we, we both are believers that you just don't you don't want to lead a kid into a tournament or an adult into a tournament overthinking things or or making drastic grip changes, you know. So, but like Matt said, in the off season, you know, we've worked with players, and he's worked with top players that have made changes in, in a few weeks and then gone out to play. For, you know, it's their livelihood. They, they, you know, they have to be ready. They have to be prepared. There's no excuses. They've got to be ready. So uh, it, it can it can happen. But, uh, you know, that was a long-winded answer of, of uh, just sometimes coaches, and, and I am too, I want to, want to solve all their players' problems in a day, and it just doesn't work that way. It, ta it takes time. It takes time to, to, build, to build the right fundamentals and technique. Well, and I, I want to, the reason I asked the question is I know a lot of times, you know, as parents, um, we see that our kid is learning something new in their drills or in their private lessons. And, you know, we think, oh, they're doing great in the lesson. Let's get them signed up for a tournament. Yeah. And sometimes you really have to take a step back from competition and give the player time to hone the skill, maybe set up some practice matches for them so that they can, you know, start playing points and be in live ball settings, but not have the pressure of tournament ranking points or UTR rating or any of that on the line, you know, as they're developing this new skill and really perfecting it. It takes time. It, and it's a weird grip changes. It's really awkward at first. Hmm. It is. It is. Yeah. 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 Matt, will, go ahead, Matt. You, you, you have. Yeah. That. No. No. You're. You're. You're absolutely right. Um, grip changes can take time. I mean, continental a little bit less than other. Ground stroke is a much bigger commitment, and I know we plan on doing uh, at least a forehand model and, and probably a backhand model as well. Um, continental, you 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 can get quicker. I, I will say, um, especially on the serve, because you're standing right. You're not forehand you're because moving. the ball is coming fast. You have to react. You're moving. Uh, ground strokes, you got to find your grip really quick. Ground stroke grips have to be done with, with caution at the right time with a break between tournaments. Um, the serve grip especially, which is very important because you're standing there. I'm not saying change your grip and play a term the next day. But um, in a couple of weeks, if you're in the right grip, um, it, it, it can be done. Obviously, the more time you have, the better. And, and, and great suggestion on practice sets because um, that is the key. Do it. Do it drilling, and then you do it live ball, and as you mentioned, doing practice sets. And if you're comfortable, go play a tournament. If you're not, um, then there's no rush to get back. Go play a tournament when you're 100% comfortable. So it, it cuts down on the time, but as Mark alluded to, uh, and you did as well, it, it should be done at, at the right time. Uh, absolutely. So how do people find GripMD? Where can they purchase it? How much does it cost? All of that good stuff. So we're uh, we're – we're right now we're online and at the website is thegripmd.com and we are just getting into a few stores some tennis shops in boca that sort of thing but we're gonna start you'll, you'll start seeing it at country clubs a little more but the, the best way to get it is online and the price right now for the junior model or the smaller model is 25 the, for in a pre-order sale is 25 dollars and the the, our first grip MD, which which covers grip sizes four and a quarter to four and a half, is thirty nine ninety five. 
and they can just order it direct through you right now. And you guys graciously offered to do a discount for the Parenting Aces premium members. So for you premium members watching or listening, make sure to check out our member discount page and get the code so you can order at a discounted price, which is really awesome. Thanks you guys for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Yeah. So what else do we need to know about Group MD? We know you're coming out with a junior model um, soon. You're coming out with ground stroke models in the near future, hopefully. And this is something that parents should get for their kids and send them out to the court with a bucket of balls and a ball machine and let them get started and, and start feeling that proper continental grip as they're hitting serves, overheads, volleys, et cetera. What else? Well, I, I would I would say you just you you want your kids or or even if you're an adult playing, you, you want to see how good you can be, and and you know I'd hate to have you go out there practice 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 and you just you get stuck and your level, you know you see people pass you by or or you know if you're a young player and you want to play in national tournaments and maybe one day play college, and you're just and your grips are just. And you know they're they're everywhere, and, and and they're not set to to the right you know right technique. You're probably not going to be the best you can be, and that's and and I know you know Matt can talk more about that, but I know that's what the, initially with him being so invested in grips and helping kids and, and being a coach first. That's why he came up with this this product. Matt, what you got to add? Yeah, no, I I think that's right. I think you know worst case scenario if you buy one you find you're in the perfect perfect grip which which most aren't to a t i'd say gosh 95 percent aren't in the in the perfect grip um you know i i just think it, you know it, it can really help um and and for for coaches out there um you know in academies i, I think it's it's great as well so um yeah, I, I'd say the videos. Are, I'd say the videos are helpful if you're looking for good drills to do along with it. Um, I know a lot of really good coaches that that have their own drills that that can work um, with the Grip MD. But uh, check out our YouTube and our website. Um, I, I think those videos will help give you the get you on the right path um, when you're using the Grip MD. And those videos are good for junior coaches to to watch and learn from as well, right? Uh, so if they're implementing Grip grip MD in their lessons, then those are drills that they can utilize as well. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Well, guys, um, I can't let you go without giving a shout out to your alma mater. So, um, Mark, you went to University of Florida. Yeah. Shout out to the Gators. Um, national champions this year. <laughs> so, uh, you had, were you yeah. there? I went, I went, yeah, I brought my daughter with me and to see coach Shelton and, uh, and, and Pearl and it was, it was amazing. Yeah. And, uh, Tanner Stump, what, what a great job they did and, and was so proud of their guys. And, and I mean, lastly to see Ben Shelton, who, when I was coaching at Florida was just this little guy running around and, uh, for him to, to clinch the win. And it was amazing. Absolutely. I'm, I'm so happy for them. Yeah. And Ben's having a great summer too. So yeah. yeah, continued success to him and to the Gators. And Matt, you went to Notre Dame and shout yep. out to, shout to out, Notre yeah. Dame. Yep, to the Fighting Irish. I was actually lucky enough to play with Ryan Satry, who's a coach now. And he was, oftentimes he was two in the country right behind my good friend James Blake, who was one. So I was lucky enough to be uh, teammates with Ryan Satry for three years at Notre Dame. And now he's the head coach and, and doing a great job. And I uh, actually sent a couple of players his way who have really, um, uh, really blossomed, one of them top five in the country. So the, the program's in good hands. And um, I think he's going to take the program much higher. And to try to chase those Gators, Mark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're on your I tail. Don't get, don't get too comfortable. We're on your tail. 
right. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and for sharing Grip MD with the Parenting Aces audience and for the generous discount that you'll be offering to our premium members. Um, again, to our listeners, make sure you check the member discount page if you are a premium member already. And if you're not a premium member, now's a great time to join. You got an even more incentive to, to get that going. Really appreciate it. It was lovely speaking with you guys. And I look forward to all the new products coming out from Grip MD. I look forward to getting my my own one when you come out with the lefty version. So you'll have to let me know when that one's live and ready to go. Or if you need a guinea pig, I'm always here for you. For sure. Perfect. For sure. Thanks a lot. Yeah, appreciate, you, appreciate you having us. For sure. And to my listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time on Parenting Aces.